Welcome to a new Applied Go Crash Course. My name is Christoph Berger and today we'll have a look at what JSON is and how to send and receive basic JSON in Go. What is JSON? JSON is a standard data format for exchanging data over the net and between applications. It became popular as a more readable alternative to XML, with the added benefit that JavaScript code can read and write JSON data out of the box. And almost any other popular programming language has at least one library for handling JSON data. JSON is a human-readable text format, which makes it suitable for configuration files as well. So how does JSON data look like? The syntax of JSON is almost like you would create a JavaScript object. This, by the way, is also where the name JSON comes from. It is an acronym for JavaScript Standard Object Notation. In its base form, JSON data is a list of name value entities. As an example, let's create some weather information in JSON. Note that the names must be enclosed in double quotes. This is not a requirement for JavaScript, only for JSON. JSON knows some other data types besides strings. Numbers, booleans, null value, arrays and objects. Let's add some of these to our weather data. A numeric temperature, a boolean to tell whether the temperature is measured in Celsius or Fahrenheit, an array with a temperature forecast for the next three days, and an object that holds wind direction and wind speed. Some data types or special values cannot be expressed in JSON. Most notably, there is no date type. Any date value is converted to and from an ISO 8601 date string. Also, JavaScript special values not a number, infinity and minus infinity are simply turned into a null value. Go standard library includes the package encoding JSON that makes working with JSON a snap. With this package, we can map JSON objects to ghost struct types and convert data between the two. Let's examine this in the code. Defining the structure of our weather data in Go is straightforward. Note that the JSON package only encodes public fields of a struct. The JSON fields are all lowercase, so we need to map the struct field names to the corresponding JSON field names. Luckily, GoStructs come with a string tag feature. This way we can tag every struct field with the corresponding JSON field name. Let's do this for all our struct fields. For wind direction and speed, we create a separate data structure called wind data. Here is a tip. Instead of typing the ghost struct manually, have a script converted for you. Just go to mhold.github.io slash json minus 2 minus go and paste the json data. You instantly get an auto-generated go structure from it. Let's implement a tiny server application. The client sends its location and the server responds by sending weather data. Location data is just a latitude and a longitude. For the server, we need a function for handling the request. First, we need a location struct to receive the decoded data. The location data is inside the request body, which is an IO read closer, but we need a byte slice for unmarshalling. Read all from IO util just comes in handy. Note that we use read all here for simplicity. Be careful when using read-all in larger projects, as reading large files can consume a lot of memory. Now we can decode the request data using the unmarshal function.
If the request was correctly received, let's print it to the console. Now it's time to prepare our response by setting up a weather data structure. We could try fetching the data from a weather service, but for the purpose of demonstrating JSON handling, let's just use some mockup data. For encoding the ghost struct as JSON, we use the Marshall function from encoding JSON. We send a JSON response, so we need to set the content type header accordingly. Sending the response is as easy as writing to the response writer object. Thanks to Go's HTTP package, starting the server is a piece of cake. Our mock client is almost as simple as the server. Again, we create JSON by marshalling a struct, in this case a log struct literal. Then we set up a new HTTP request for posting the JSON data to the local port 8080. An HTTP client will send our HTTP request to the server and collect the response. Finally, we print the received response and close the response body. The main function is as easy as it can get. We start the server in a Go routine and then run the client. Now let's see how it works. On the command line we type go run json.go and we'll see the received location data as well as the response containing all the weather data. There's a bit more about JSON than fits into a short screencast. If you want to learn more about JSON, like decoding JSON data of an unknown structure or how to implement stream encoding or decoding, the article JSON and Go from the official Go blog is a great place to start. The transcript for this video is available at appliedgo.net slash JSON, where you can also find the link to the source code as well as installation instructions. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and happy coding!